The medicine man is a priestly healer and spiritual leader of Native American tribes who believe that physical nature might be brought under control of man in the person of a medicine man. Native American tribes adhered to a range of beliefs, ceremonies, and rituals regarding communication with the spirit world, in which their religious leader enters supernatural realms, particularly when the tribe is facing adversity or need to obtain solutions to problems afflicting the community, including sickness. The word medicine, associated with Native Indians, means mystery. And this word was applied by Europeans to anything mysterious or unaccountable. The Native Indians do not use the term medicine man, but in each tribe they have a word or term of their own construction that is synonymous with mystery or mystery man. Their principal deity, the Great Spirit, is also referred to as the Great Mystery. The medicine man is believed to have a spiritual connection with the animals, supernatural creatures. In all elements of nature, spirits were believed to inhabit the rivers, lakes, mountains, trees, plants, sky, stars, sun, animals, insects, fish, flowers, and birds. The belief and practice of Native American Indians incorporates a number of beliefs such as animism, totemism, shamanism, fetishism, and ritualism. These beliefs, taken as a whole, have strong religious connotations. This belief system and the role of the medicine man is particularly associated with cultures of hunter-gatherers, who believe that every natural object is controlled by its own independent spirit or soul. There were good and bad spirits. The good spirits helped men, and the bad spirits were liable to wreak havoc and harm on people and their tribes. It is the bad spirits that cause trouble, suffering, sickness, death, and disease. When a man became ill, it was believed that a bad spirit had entered his body and taken his soul away. It is therefore not surprising that the Native Americans would wish to gain power over these spirits. If a medicine man had control over the spirits, he became extremely powerful. A medicine man would know protective chants and words that have special knowledge of objects which he carried in a medicine bag and would disarm bad spirits and protect their owners. This type of knowledge is mean by medicine or mystery. The Native Americans who spent their lives in trying to gain such knowledge are referred to as shaman. The medicine people, mystery men, or a medicine man. The medicine man used appropriate words, chants, objects, dances, and rituals to protect men from evil spirits. His role is that of opponent to the bad spirits and of guardian to the ordinary men. The role of the medicine man differs from tribe to tribe as there are some regional and tribal variations to their beliefs in shamanism. There are, however, several common roles that are shared by every medicine man. A medicine man was a healer, communicator, educator, prophet, and mystic all rolled up into one. Medicine Man was a strong communicator and provided help and advice to members of the tribe for which he was paid. Gotta make a living. He was an educator and a historian, keeper of myths, legends, traditions, tribal wisdom, but a responsibility. The Medicine Man was a prophet to perform various forms of prophecy. He was a mystic and possessed the ability to leave the body and communicate with the spiritual world. In many tribes, including the Cheyenne and the Sioux, the medicine man also had the role of the head warrior or war chief, which made him the most influential man of the tribe. was equipped with a regular set of objects that helped him communicate with spirits in another world. They used dances, gestures, and sounds as to their symbolic powers of the medicine man. 
to enter the spirit world, the means and powers by which the medicine man practiced, his role included knowledge of the trance state and the use of trance-inducing methods to go on vision quests and incite tribe members. I can't relate to that because I've never been in a trance. I don't even know what it would be like. I was in love once. The use of symbolic regalia and sacred objects, such as the calumet or pipe, the medicine shamanistic ceremonies and rituals, wearing ceremonial clothes, such as amazing costumes worn by the medicine men's skinwalkers. The medicine man of some tribes also used masks that were believed to hold spiritual powers and would identify them with the spirits in other worlds and activate their powers. Symbolic magic, incantations, prayer sticks, feathers, war dances, rain dances, and hunting dances with the use of rattles and drums to incarnate the spirits of nature and amplify their power. Rite of Passage Rituals, where he advised on the significance of the power animal revealed on his spiritual journey or in vision quests and provided sacred contents to be placed in medicine bags. War paint. Medicine men often chose certain markings and symbols for warriors during the, the application of the war paint. This afforded the wearer with magic for power and protection by drawing on natural powers and combining these with the power of the warrior. Medicine men, also witch doctors and shamans, maintained the health of their tribe by gathering and distributing herbs, performing minor surgical procedures, providing medical advice and supernatural treatment, such as charms, spells, and amulets to ward off evil spirits. In Apache society, as would likely have been the case in many others, medicine men initiate a ceremony over the patient which is attained by family and friends. It consists of magic formulas, prayers, and drumming. The medicine man then, from patients recalling of their past and possible offenses against their religion or tribal rules, reveals the nature of the disease and how to treat it. They were believed by the tribe to be able to contact spirits or gods and use their supernatural powers to cure the patient and, in the process, remove evil spirits. The medicine men would likely have been central figures in the tribal system because their medical knowledge and because they could seemingly contact the gods. Their religious and medical training were necessarily passed down orally. Navajo Hatali are traditional medicine men who are called upon to perform healing ceremonies. Each medicine man brings training as an apprentice to an older practicing singer. During apprenticeship, the apprentice assembles medicine bundles, jish, required to perform ceremonies and assist the teacher until deemed ready for independent practice. Throughout his lifetime, a medicine man can only learn a few chants as each requires a great deal of time and effort to learn and perfect. Songs are orally passed down in traditional Navajo from generation to generation. Unlike other American medical practitioners that rely on visions and personal powers, a healer acts as a facilitator that transfers powers from the holy people to the patient to restore balance and harmony. Healing practice is performed within a ceremonial hogan. It is common for medicine men to receive payment for their healing services. In the past, healing was exchanged for sheep. In modern times, however, monetary payment has become a widely accepted form of compensation. It should be noted that women can also play the role of healer in medicinal practice. Natural medicine is the use of natural ways, herbal remedies, and traditional practices to heal ailments. Every culture uses a type of natural medicine. In ancient cultures, village medicine men were the doctors of the community passing on medical knowledge onto the apprentices that followed them. Many categories of healing methods fit in the natural medicine discipline. Among these are folk medicine, complementary treatments, and alternative health care. 
Natural medicine is best described as medical practices that are in position prior to the advent of modern medicine. This also may include herbal medicine or phytotherapy, which is certainly prevalent in Chinese, Aridevic, Ayurvedic, and, or Indian in ancient Greek medicine. Ayurvedic medicine and herbal healing, basically anything out of the mainstream medical establishment, is often considered unworthy. But more attention deserves to be paid to ancient remedies. Modern and Western scientists should give it the dignity of a second look. I'll say. Early Chinese medicine men believe ginseng is one of the most commonly used herbal medicines in the world today. It has been used for thousands of years to cure a number of diseases as well as to rejuvenate and restore physical energy. Early Chinese medicine men believed that this root was good for human health because its shape tended to resemble the human body. It was thus widely prescribed for virtually all manner of ailments. The popularity of the herb has not waned for thousands of years, and which is enough proof of its medical effectiveness. Today we continue to use it both as a cure and as a tonic to maintain good health. An ancient intact complex holistic health care system practiced and used by indigenous peoples worldwide is more profound and more deeply rooted and complex than is commonly understood based upon spiritual rather than materialistic or Cartesian worldview. Indian medicine emphasizes the spirit world, supernatural forces and religion, which is considered virtually identical with medicine. To some degree, Indian medicine depends upon phenomena that can be best described as mystical, even magical. Indian medicine was not a primitive medicine that is embryonic modern medicine or a predecessor to Western medicine, but an entirely different entity. In the last third of the 20th century and into the 21st, Indian medicine has become increasingly popular with holistic and alternative medicine practitioners. The healing traditions have been passed down orally. I've read before that herbs are a gift from God to man, herbs and spices. Turmeric is also used, and I use it. Have you ever count the stars? I can't ever get the same number. They keep changing on me. I don't even know what a star is, exactly. Well, your body knows. It's your mind that forgot. During a time when certain stones knew and spoke your name, they would be placed in your medicine pouch. These ancestor stones became your guide because they were here first, even before life, and possess ancient knowledge. Hmm. To begin to understand Native Americans' role in medicine, it is very important to have a brief understanding of their own history in relation to health and medicine. It is astonishing to see historically the early advancements many tribes had in the medical field. Those advancements are even more amazing when compared to the European knowledge of medicine that prevailed at the time. Native American healing traditions vary by tribe, often reaching back thousands of years. There seems to be a consensus among most tribes that health is an expression of the spirit and a continual process of staying strong spiritually, mentally, and physically. Morning Dove of the Sela tribe, the first female Native American author to publish a book, wrote, Everything on earth has a purpose, every disease an herb to cure it, and every person a mission. This is the Indian theory of existence. This idea, this echoic of the holistic view of medicine, 
that is taught throughout many modern U.S. medical schools and even originates centuries ago with Hippocrates, the father of the Hippocratic Oath. Many herbs used by Native Americans have provided derivatives for many modern medications. One statistic says that more than 120 drugs prescribed by physicians today were first made from plant extracts, and 75% of these were derived from examining plants used in traditional indigenous medicine. Some examples are listed with their scientific name and purpose. Cascara Sagrada, a laxative. Dogbane, to treat edema, secondary to renal and cardiac failure. An oral contraceptive. Foxglove, to treat heart failure. Main ingredient in... Digitalis. Digitalis. Guacum. Antitussive mobitussin guaco-based fecal occult blood test. Antitussive guaco-based fecal occult blood test. Don't ask me. This one is interesting. Salicin metabolizes to salicylic acid, main ingredient in aspirin. Sassafras, antihelminthic, anticoagulant, antidiarrheal, and antiemetic. All tribes had herbs for certain ailments, and some tribes were advanced in their tools and procedures. I was always taught if the leaves have three, then leave them be. They had syringes made from hollow bones. They performed arthrocentesis, surgical and wound debridement. Orthopedic techniques such as traction and counter-traction. Thoracentesis. Thoracentesis and others, including trephination. trephination, a type of brain surgery performed successfully in the Inca and Mayan civilizations. Not only were some of these foreign to early European doctors, but the native methods were more humane. Before the mid-1800s, European doctors lacked effective anesthetics when many tribes had these. Some non-native physicians relied on knocking patients out by striking them in the jaw. Others used ether, alcohol, or opium, which at times required such high dosages that they often killed the patients. The natives of the southwestern and northern Mexico used peyote to eliminate the pain of lacerations fractures, snake bites, etc. Peyote was so effective that U.S. Army surgeons adopted its use as a painkiller. Jamestown weed, more commonly known as Jimson weed, was used externally and internally as an antiseptic by the natives of the Virginia area. The roots were ground into a poultice for external use and ingested for more systemic results. These practices were also adopted by early colonial physicians due to its effectiveness. Pharmacology is a key part of historic and modern medicine, but would be foundationless without physicians. Two early influential Native American physicians played a key part in medicine today. The earliest is Susan LaFleche Peacoat, 1865-1915, from the Omaha tribe. Not only was she the first female Native American physician in the U.S., but also among the first Native Americans to graduate from medical school. Another influential physician was Carlos Montezuma, 1866 to 1923. He was kidnapped from his Yabapai family in Arizona and sold to a photographer named Carlos Gentile for 30 pieces of silver. I kid you not. Upon adopting him as a son, Gentile changed Carlos Montezuma's name from his Yabapai birth name, Wasaha, which changed into after a stint in photography and stage acting, they settled in Chicago. It was here that his official education began and ended. He graduated from Chicago Medical College in 1889, becoming the first Navajo man to earn an MD degree. Eventually, upon returning to Arizona as the doctor for the Carlisle Indian School Pop Warner football team, he reconnected with his family, culture, and heritage. Having previously seen government bureaucracy inhibit and persecute Native Americans, he felt a passion for improving their conditions. Whether the modern field of medicine recognizes it or not, Native Americans are interactively intertwined into the history of medicine. It may be their view on health, philosophy, or their extensive contributions to pharmacology. It may be a woman born in a teepee who became a trailblazer for women and Natives everywhere. It may be a man kidnapped from his family and culture who eventually returned home to become a beacon 
for a suppressed and often misunderstood and malign people. Whichever way it might be, medicine has always been a pillar of Native American culture and will continue to be long after Native American Heritage Month. Native American contributions are a part of the heritage of medicine and a great debt of gratitude is owed for those contributions. Got nowhere to go. And you will die. I came here to die with you. I'll live with you. I ain't so hard for men like you and me. It's living, it's hard. In our experience to Native American literature, it seems that there has been a common occurrence of characters going through a sort of change that allows them to view life differently, or in some cases, gain a better understanding of their culture. Oftentimes, these natives would incorporate nature or natural things in these situations as a beneficial factor. One rather common natural procedure is the use of peyote. Peyote is a cactus that is commonly found in the deserts of Texas and Mexico. When ingested, the consumer enters a hallucinogenic state as a result of the psychoactive chemicals found in the cactus. Peyote is most frequently abused as a form of narcotic, and for that reason it is illegal to possess. In one case that differs from how we have seen natives treated is that the United States government has allowed them to possess and use peyote since 1976. Though that does not mean that only used peyote. As a matter of fact, have used this plant for thousands of years and continue to today. Peyote was held in rather high esteem and was generally associated with religious and spiritual rituals. The most common way that peyote is consumed is simply by chewing the buds or by brewing a cup of tea for a more mild experience. Since natives seem to hold such high reverence for the natural world, it would make sense for them to possess an interest in a plant that had such a large impact on their life as peyote. In fact, these natives appreciated and respected this plant enough to partake in rituals that would last the entirety of the day. Richard Spear, or better known as Hunting Crow, describes the richness of peyote as such. In the center of the teepee, opposite the door entrance, is a half-moon-shaped mound where they place the chief or medicine man. Objects used in the ceremony include a staff, a good, a gourd with rocks in it, a cup of sage and feathers, Participants drink tea made from peyote in a fresh or powder form. The people form a circle with everyone part of the circle, whether you sing or not. Once inside, you are there all night, saying prayers and using tobacco, cedar, and sage. This scene sounds similar to some that we have encountered in a sense that it further reveals the cohesion that is applied to native life. Medicine men possess and use peyote commonly, especially considered that their forms of medicine were pretty much always derived from nature. As it turns out, natives appear to be the only group of people who responsibly use peyote today. That is not overly shocking though, being that the works we have read appear to describe natives as a respect for nature that is matched by few. The active drug in peyote, mescaline, causes the user to experience a dream-like effect during the first few hours. After that, the user will experience auditory and visual hallucinations, much like when a person consumes LSD or acid. However, peyote is a little more mellow than LSD. LSD. LSD, LSD. Not only is it more mellow than LSD, the high the user experiences while on peyote is more suitable for inner reflection and contemplation. Native Americans might use peyote. The drug has psychological effects that would not only aid a Native American ceremony, but also help an individual get a better sense of his or herself.
Jesus in a bahujon, Jesus in a bahujon, he are no hene. I've tried it before. When I was a teenager, mescaline was very big. Mescaline is much more mellow. The Navajo Skinwalker Legend The Navajo Skinwalker Legend is one of the most complex and terrifying stories, steeped in mystery and evil intent. Many Navajos believe firmly in the existence of skinwalkers and refuse to discuss them publicly for fear of retribution. They believe skinwalkers walk freely among the tribe and secretly transform under the cover of night. The term Yinel Dushi literally translates to with it he goes on all fours. According to Navajo legend, a skinwalker is a medicine man or witch who has attained the highest level of priesthood in the tribe, but chose to use his or her power for evil by taking the form of an animal to inflict pain and suffering on others. To become skinwalker requires the most evil of deeds, the killing of a close family member. They literally become humans who have acquired immense supernatural power, including the ability to transform into animals and other people. According to the Navajo Skinwalker legend, these evil witches are typically seen in the form of a coyote, owl, fox, wolf, or crow. Although they do have the ability to turn into any animal they choose, because it is believed that skinwalkers wear skins of the animals they transform into, it is considered taboo to wear the pelt of any animal. In fact, the Navajo are only known to wear two hides, sheepskin and buckskin, both of which are only used for ceremonial purposes. Those who have talked of their encounters with these evil beings describe a number of ways in which a skinwalker will try to inflict harm. Some describe hearing knocks on the window or banging on the walls. Others have spotted an animal-like figure peering in through a window. According to Navajo skinwalker legend, they are seldom caught. Those who do track a skinwalker and learn of their true identity must pronounce the name of the evil one in full. Once this happens, the skinwalker will get sick or die from the wrongs they inflicted against others. to know how to decipher. I think the secret to life is just live the right way and do the right thing. Always do the right thing and you won't have any regrets and you'll live a good righteous life and try to do something to help wake up others. That would be my prescription but that's just me. My dad works really hard. Don't need to call a bucks to him. Please, thank you.
Next episode, we'll be getting into some of the tribes, and most interesting to me, their methods of medicine and magic. It sounds like good medicine. And we'll get into shamanism. <laughs>